Hello, welcome back to The Crafty Organizer. I'm Noreen Burke and today we get to do an amazing DIY lantern out of Dollar Tree items. Let's go. The other day I was going through my craft supply trying to purge down and go ahead and use up some of those supplies that I've been storing. I went online to get some ideas and I came across this amazing idea by She So Craft D. Her name is D and she came up with this lantern from dollar store items. Take a look at this. This is made from just those little square decor boxes that you always find at the Dollar Tree, but you could do this with a box or a cut down lid as well. But the main component are these Hot Wheel racer tracks. And when I saw this, I thought I'm never gonna find these. Every time I see an amazing idea like this, it's one of those hard to find items. So I drove all the way out to my good Dollar Tree. Let me know in the comments below if when you see these videos, you race to the Dollar Tree and you can't find what you want. That always happens to me. And I feel like the Dollar Tree closest to me has nothing. <laughs> so I drove away to the good one to get this and they had it. So then I thought, okay, before I get you guys all excited, I hit two more Dollar Trees on the home, including the crappy one by my house. They had these tracks. So I'm hopeful that if you decide to make this, that you will easily find these. Here's what you're going to need. I got spray paint because I wanted this to be quick and easy. I love crafting, I just don't like long crafting. Two of the decor boxes, I chose different sizes, but you can use a box. Some caulk is optional, and these race tracks. You guys, these are what are going to be magic in this. I also got some greens from Joann's on clearance. You'll need a sanding block, and another optional item is dough, and I'll show you why in a minute. Now, if your picture has those little hanging blocks on it, just pull it out. Be careful, I broke mine, but I'm just gonna glue that back together. Now, if yours also comes with art on the outside, these Dollar Tree food scrapers are my best friend. Just wiggle the end in and look how you can just slide this off like butter. <laughs> I love these little scrapers, so if you don't have one, get one. Now that it's smooth, I'm gonna go ahead and take my sanding block that I also got from the Dollar Tree and just start roughing up the entire track. You want to take off the sheen all the way around this so that the paint has something to stick to. So once it's no longer shiny, you can begin the process. And you guys, this is the assembly. So if you're ever intimidated by crafting, this is the easiest one I've ever seen. So we're gonna glue these in in a second. That's why this one popped out. But basically the dome is created by the racetracks. So you'll only need one set of racetracks and one box if you only want to make one lantern. I'm doing a set. Now here's where that caulk comes in. There is a groove that runs all along both sides of the racetracks and I didn't want to have to try and fill that up with paint or have that visible. So I filled up the entire seam with a little bit of caulk. It stays flexible so that while I'm drawing it, it won't crack, but it'll make a much cleaner finish. Now I'm looking at what I will want for finial. I have a box of handles and knobs that I've been keeping. I initially started thinking I wanted maybe a shabby chic look, but that just wasn't vibing with what I wanted. So I pulled out my bag of this and that from my miscellaneous box. I got a couple of those rings that snap together and a large wooden bead and just fit it through. I just fed the little ring through and now it'll look like my lantern has an actual hanging portion like most lanterns do. Now this is the other thing you could do and this is optional. With the Play-Doh you can attach the base so that it looks like it's welded on or you can also create a finial look that you want. So in this case I'm making one of those pointy, I think it's called an oblique, obli an oblisk, oblisk? <laughs> I don't know what it's called, with a little ball on top, but you can create whatever shape you want, and once it's dry, it will spray paint. So let's get to the assembly here. All you have to do is glue the tracks to the corners, and I mean it, this is an easy project. So let me show you again. Just run some glue down at the bottoms, press it on the inside, and do this to all four sides. Now remember, it only takes two tracks. 
Now you'll want to make sure that there's no glue pouring out. That definitely changed the look of mine. I also ran some glue on the inside so that they wouldn't slide out. I was really trying to keep that dome straight and they had a tendency to start curving inside making it a little bit rounder. Now once that's done, I'm going to attach glue to the top portions and in retrospect I wish I had measured this out because it is a little wonky but that's okay once it's on my shelf you don't even notice that now to attach the top I took a tiny ball of the clay and I just pressed it into the ball and started spreading out the base of the clay so that it looks like it has a welded piece attached to that handle once I had it in the shape that I liked and I felt like it was pretty flat I took a tiny dab of glue and just attached it to the top. Then I could spread out that seam so that it has an invisible look and that stands up the way I want. Here's a top view of it. A tiny dab of glue, I just put it into place and then spread out the remaining part of the clay so that it's a smooth transition. Now that I have the tops attached, I am ready to go ahead and start painting it. But again, you could get so creative to this top and add whatever finish you want as a finial. I used the Krylon Fusion paint. This has primer in it and it does work well with plastic. Now I'm going to confess, this took about four coats. Fortunately, this brand dries very quickly. I only gave it about 10 or 15 minutes in between each coat. And I did make sure to lay it down so that I could get all of the inside parts. But the orange was still coming through just a tiny bit. So I added one more coat of acrylic paint on the outside. Now I did notice I had missed a lot of little strings of hot glue. So be diligent in cleaning that up because it does show up. So while I was painting it with the acrylic paint, I did take the opportunity to clean it up a little bit more. And I put a nice thick coat of the acrylic paint all the way around, filling in any of the grooves that I missed and any imperfections that happened. Now this part I'm on the fence with. I'm still considering going back and filling those corners with either caulk or with the clay. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But this is what they look like all finished. They're beautiful and clean, but I want a rustic look. So I'm going back over with a marker. You can dry brush or you could skip the distressing technique. I ended up going in with a thicker marker afterwards because I do like that distressed look. And I just kept going over where I thought distress would naturally happen with something that was aged. Once I was satisfied with where all of that aging and natural distressing would have been, I'm going to go ahead and start getting my greens out and filling this up. I think this is going to be fun during the holidays to swap out the different seasonal colors and fillings. Here it is all finished. I am in love with the look of this. I think, you guys, this is an out of the park idea. So go by She's So Crafty and tell Dee that you loved this idea that she came up with. I think I'm going to make a couple of more so that I can have some outside. In the future, I would fill in that top portion first, and I might even do a small nut and screw through it so that I can actually hang these. I think this would look so cute outside during the holidays. But let me know what you think of this and if it's an idea you would replicate. It's been a long time since I got so excited about a DIY project that I jumped in my car, but this one from She So Crafty was amazing. So Dee, thank you for sharing this idea. I loved making it, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Speaking of appreciation, thank you so much to my patrons who allow me to make these videos. If you are interested in seeing your name on here and supporting my channel, my information is down in the description below. Thanks so much for watching today and I will see you guys in just a few days. Bye!